Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very grateful for this invitation to address you today. I'm sorry not to be able to be with you in person. My central point is that if Europe is to witness a significant reduction of human suffering at its borders, it must bank not on strict closure and restriction, but on regulated openness and mobility. It is paradoxical that in the name of securing borders, European states are actually losing control over their borders, as criminal rings will most often be ahead of the game. Restrictive policies without regular migration channels for asylum seekers and much needed low wage migrants only entrench smuggling operations and underground labor markets, where criminal rings and unscrupulous employers exploit undocumented migrants and increase the precariousness of the migrant situation, resulting in more deaths at sea and more human rights violations. Migrants come due to push factors, such as violence or poverty, as well as in response to pull factors, such as the unrecognized needs in the labor markets of EU member states, as migrants are often willing to do the dirty, difficult and dangerous jobs that nationals will not at the exploitative wages that unscrupulous employers will offer, including in sectors such as construction, agriculture, hospitality and caregiving. Any attempt at sealing borders, preventing irregular migrants from entering the EU, as the nationalist populist discourse stridently calls for, will continue to fail on a massive scale. Sealing international borders is near impossible. Migrants will come despite all efforts to stop them, but at a terrible cost in lives and suffering if this is not well organized. Currently, Migrants see no other option but to migrate irregularly due to a lack of legal migration channels, particularly for refugees and low-wage migrant workers. With time, continued repression of irregular migration is counterproductive as it drives migrants further underground, disempowering them and entrenching smuggling rings, while Global North states continue uh, need to continue attempting to bring unscrupulous smugglers to trial for the suffering they inflict on migrants, they will not succeed at fighting resourceful and adaptable criminal rings unless they de destroy their business model, which was created when barriers were erected and which thrives at evading restrictive European migration policies. No one died in the Mediterranean in the 50s and 60s when hundreds of thousands of migrants crossed to Europe. Control and mobility were the rule. Europe needs less repression of survival migration and more harm reduction policies. Europe must bank on mobility across the Mediterranean in both directions as a dynamic factor of economic and social development. States should recognize their real labor needs, including for low wage work, they should, on the one hand, open up many more regular migration channels, thus allowing for registering migrants, identifying protection needs, informing on labor markets and the risks of irregular migration. On the other, they should repress unscrupulous employers who exploit the fear of migrants to be detected, detained and deported. Effectively implementing the employer sanction directive should be a priority. More concerted effort is also required from European member states to assist the frontline states such as Italy, Greece, Malta and Spain. The excellent search and rescue programs cannot be their sole responsibility. Mare Nostrum, with its focus on saving lives, should be taken up as an example of what should be done everywhere. There is also an urgent need to allow migrants to circulate within the EU to where they can be reunited with their families or find a job and start contributing to their new communities. Trying to confine them to the territory of the frontline countries obliges migrants to continue traveling underground, further entrenching criminal rings and unscrupulous employers, and it places undue responsibilities on the frontline countries. Facilitating access to justice for all migrants without fear of detection, detention and deportation is also key. The European Court of Human Rights, the European Court of Justice, national courts and tribunals, national human rights institutions and ombudspersons have shown their willingness to contribute to changing mentalities 
through fighting nationalist fantasies and populist stereotypes. Developing alternatives to detention would also help. Moreover, Europe cannot leave thousands of refugees just outside its borders, in Turkey or Lebanon, for example, and expect them to stay there quietly without trying to cross borders to create a future for their families. EU member states need to create refugee resettlement programs on a much larger scale, which would in need, indeed contribute to reducing the number of people who have recourse to smuggling operations. In conclusion, the EU needs to establish a human rights-based, coherent and comprehensive migration policy which takes all these issues into account and makes mobility its central asset. Europe needs political leadership on this issue, recognizing that fact-based analysis and long-term solutions contradict the nationalist populist fantasized threats that sway uninformed electorates. Focusing on saving lives and protecting from violence and discrimination, Europe must consolidate its common human rights culture and celebrate diversity as benefiting everyone, citizens and foreigners alike. I thank you for your kind attention.